Okay, so this uh, video is about ultrafiltration, which is the very first process that happens in the kidney uh, to the blood as it goes through. So the blood's coming in through the renal artery. It then divides off into a number of smaller arterioles, and uh, some of those small arterioles are called the afferent arterioles, which is, starts with an A. The afferent arteriole um, then divides down really, really quickly into this sort of bundle of capillaries suspended in this kind of goblet shape of um, the Bowman's capsule. Because those capillaries divide down so very rapidly from this high pressure blood, the blood pressure is maintained because it's, it's, it's still sort of under quite high pressure and it's just gone down into a load of narrower vessels. What helps to maintain that pressure is the fact that the efferent arteriole, leaving that bundle of capillaries, is an, of a narrower diameter. And arterioles have muscle in their walls, so it can maintain that sort of narrowness of diameter to keep the blood pressure very high inside the glomerulus. So, because all the fluid inside of the glomerulus is under high pressure, and because capillaries are of themselves very leaky, that means that the fluid is forced out of the holes in the capillary. Those holes are called fenestrations uh, from the, I guess, French or Latin possibly meaning window. So there are big, quite big gaps between the cells that line the capillary. And that forces the fluid component of blood out and into this space. Now, obviously, it's a bit more complicated than that because the cells that surround a capillary are endothelial cells and they therefore lie on a basement membrane. And the basement membrane has tinier pores in it which act as more of a molecular sieve. So we're forcing effectively fluid and quite large molecules out of the fenestrations, but then they're going to hit that barrier of the basement membrane tiny, tiny holes, and in fact they, the basement membrane will only allow things to pass that are less than a relative molecular mass of 68,000. What does that mean practically then? It means that it will allow a cross from the blood and into the Bowman's capsule, urea, it will allow water over, and it will allow glucose, it will allow amino acids and some small proteins across. Um, and uh, also the salts, so sodium and chloride, but what it won't allow across is it won't allow blood cells to leave or the larger albumin proteins that are found in blood. So the afferent arteriole coming in has all of those things and the efferent has all of those things but um, obviously a sort of a slightly higher concentration I suppose of um, the blood cells and larger proteins because they're not leaving. Uh, concentration wise, because we're just filtering the concentration of glucose, urea, uh, all the rest of those things is the same in the filtrate here as it is as it leaves this uh, efferent arteriole. Um, so it's, we're not altering any concentrations at this point, we're just filtering out everything that is small. There is another layer to the filter, and we can see on this model that we've got this sort of purple layer over the top of all of these blood vessels. And some of them have been, uh, this on this side, they've been uh, sort of coloured in like little spiders crawling across the surface. Those represent cells called podocytes, which literally means cells with feet. And the podocytes sort of surround, a bit like that, they surround the, um, the capillaries. And these would be the feet, the pedicels. And between them there are quite large gaps. And those gaps act as filtration slits, so they allow things to pass through and into this Bowman's capsule region. So, our three layers of the filter, and you do need to know these, you need to remember that the ultrafiltration process, if we've got a capillary, 
It's got our endothelial cells. Those have those large gaps between them called fenestrations. So we've got our blood passing through and stuff is passing out through these fenestrations. That we then, those cells are lying on a basement membrane as all epithelial tissue does. That's one of the features, isn't it, of epithelial tissue that we did in the core component. And that has smaller holes in them, acting as a molecular sieve. And then kind of surrounding that, clinging onto the sides. And when you see them sort of on electron micrographs or photographs of microscope slides, they really do look just like this. We've got those little pedicels, those little foot processes. Uh, coming onto the basement membrane with really quite big gaps between them and those big gaps are the filtration slits. So when you're talking uh, or writing as you will be doing in the exam about this you need to say these three layers so fenestrations between the endothelial cells of the capillary, basement membrane pores acting as a molecular sieve and the filtration slits between the podocytes. And all of those are filtering between the high blood pressure in the glomerulus out into the Bowman's capsule. OK, that's it. See you for the proximal convoluted tubule. <laughs>